Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome back to LMS Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. As we close this week, the key narrative has been market participants realizing they took the Fed rate cut party a little too far at the end of last year. The odds for a continued pause even in March is changing from 13% to over 30% now. But it's important to make sense of the recent data being released. Good morning, JK. Your thoughts on the job market data released yesterday? Do you feel that the labor market still remains a little bit tight? Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, all the anecdotal data for uh, employment situation in uh, US uh, has come stronger this month. Private payroll rolls uh, went up by 1,64,000 for the month. Uh, quite a bit of rise from 1,01,000 seen in November. And uh, forecast was, in fact, only for 1,30,000. Uh, and uh, mostly the employment was seen rising in the leisure and hospitality uh, sector. Uh, in another sign of labor market strength, initial jobless claims fell uh, for the full week, you know, last full week of uh, 2023, indicating that labor market remains tight and vibrant and that companies are reluctant to lay off workers. <clears throat> then also, we had uh, the layoff for numbers. Uh, the, there is challenger, uh, you know, job cuts data, which came once again much lower at 34,817 versus uh, 45,000 uh, odd in November. But for overall, uh, uh, for the year of 2023, the job cuts have been highest uh, since uh, the pandemic year of uh, 2020. So overall, the numbers were uh, strong. And this also comes in the wake of uh, the ISM uh, manufacturing PMI, the previous num uh, day's number that came uh, stronger. Uh, so uh, the uh, no markets have uh, actually uh, reacted in a way that uh, you know they have realizing they are overly expecting Fed rate cuts for the year. Now uh, there is only a 60 odd percent probability of a cut in March versus 87 percent that was seen earlier. And even <clears throat> total rate cuts for the year is now down to only four from six that was uh, seen. Uh, no, uh, that was uh, expected uh, uh, a week back also. Uh, also, uh, on the data side, Eurozone uh, services and composite PMIs were higher than initially estimated, although they continue to be in contraction territory. But the most important uh, data that uh, actually pushed up the markets on the yields as well as uh, you know pushed up the dollar a bit was uh, the German inflation number that picked up again to 3.7% in December versus 3.2% uh, in November. And the last monthly now uh, increase was uh, recorded only in June 2023. Now, uh, the food prices at 4.5% increase was the largest uh, contributor uh, for the German inflation. Now, uh, more importantly, what's you know, uh, uh, you know, becoming clear is that the inflation in the coming months might still be higher because some of the government schemes that had subsidized, uh, uh, you know, uh, heating costs and several other consumer products, uh, key consumer products uh, that will be taken off the table. And uh, so the prices will actually reflect the actual market pricing. So this will mean that, you know, inflation is not going to be lower. Uh, we all know that ECB is very strongly pushing against market expectation of uh, rate cuts uh, uh, starting March. And uh, that, that probably is what market will also be aligning with in the coming days. And uh, yesterday, uh, the reaction of all these data was that German uh, yields on the 10-year bonds uh, went up by almost uh, 11 basis points. Uh, UK PMI services was also higher. That led to UK yields also going up by about 10 basis points. In the US, the yields were higher across the tenor uh, to 10 and 30 year between 8 and 10 basis points. So basically, uh, whatever excesses that was seen on the expectations of the market is getting uh, reversed in the uh, in, at least in the first week of uh, uh, this month. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we were all, already skeptical that, you know, market was going overboard on their expectations. I mean, but that is how the market is. And it's either overshoots or undershoots. And now it's closer to uh, you know, getting closer to what the Fed has been saying about 0.75%, uh, you know, cut that they're uh, looking to do. But there is more uncertainty about uh, the uh, Eurozone interest rate cut. Although in UK, 
uh, you know, the one survey says that inflation will fall much further and uh, the U UK central bank is more likely to be uh, uh, nearer to Fed in terms of rate cuts than the ECB. That's why you see that, you know, uh, UK pound also has been uh, very well supported. The, on the currency, dollar did not move much, uh, you know, on intraday basis yesterday, but it did not uh, rise also. Uh, it did not build on its rise of the previous two days, and uh, that probably shows uh, uh, some kind of a balance between the uh, other currencies, other major currencies, and uh, the uh, US dollar in terms of uh, uh, rate expectations. Of course, Japanese yen is different. It has swiftly moved on uh, towards 145. Uh, just below 141 was seen uh, in the last week of uh, December, and all that has been uh, mostly reversed. So, because uh, Japanese, uh, uh, you know, after the recent uh, uh, natural disaster that they had uh, to, you know, face, uh, there is an expectation that Japan may continue with its uh, you know easy policy um, uh, much beyond uh, january uh, that is the market expectation so jan uh, japanese and naturally has weakened uh, we have had uh, the uh, chinese one also weakened almost 1% uh, from its uh, uh, you know best levels seen uh, under 7.10 and this is also once again uh, uh, you know due to the housing market uh, uh, or rather the real estate issues that is still lingering on and market still expecting uh, a strong stimulus uh, from the government and that has been lacking just apart from uh, you know statements of uh, uh, you know, policy uh, nothing really has actually been provided to the market uh, the yield uh, in uh, chinese 10 year bond has in the meantime slipped to uh, uh, you know below the level that was seen uh, during covid and that has actually widened the yield difference between US and China and making the yuan uh, weaker uh, also. Stocks were uh, mixed. Um, you, know, you know, the Dow Jones um, managed to eke out a very small uh, positive or a very small gain uh, because of the support from financials we have. Uh, we will have uh, results from the major banks in the coming week and uh, the expectation of good results from JP Morgan, uh, City, and Bank of America is uh, a good uh, is offering some support to the Dow on the financial side. Now on the uh, on the rupee side, of course, uh, we have seen uh, the local currency continue to display some resilience, uh, relative basis, and as the mostly traded below 83, 30, 35 in the new year, aided by selling, that is uh, not as eagerly absorbed as it used to be earlier. We have only seen modest inflow in this month from FIS uh, compared to the month of December, but the buying intensity has also been lower, despite the fact that the dollar has been relatively stronger elsewhere, including the Chinese one, which has weakened uh, steadily this month. We had generally a stronger set of economic numbers from US, which did not really affect the rupee in overseas session also yesterday. We are uh, sensing much less intervention from PSU banks on the buying side, which can lead to more strength in the rupee if we do receive uh, chunky inflows for which the expectations are uh, quite high. All in all, uh, it's a very <clears throat> active week in terms of uh, uh, data uh, from the major uh, economies. And uh, we, of course, we will have uh, the uh, preliminary inflation number from the Eurozone, which will be more important from a uh, policy perspective. And uh, uh, also the Finally, uh, we'll end with the job number from US uh, for the month of December. Expectation is uh, around 1,70,000 increase and the uh, jobless rate to rise to 3.8% from 3.7%. So uh, look forward to that. And I think we look forward to a, uh, a full liquid market from next week onwards uh, uh, when we expect some strong and directional teams to emerge. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, again, quickly summarizing uh, the theme this week has been markets realizing that they took it too far uh, in the last month of uh, December with respect to rate cut probabilities. Uh, now, uh, the US job market, of course, showed some sort of uh, resilience with the private pay payrolls going up by 1,64,000 in December. Uh, basically, employment was seen uh, rising in leisure and hospitality sector in the US. Uh, and the probability of rate cut in March is down to 60% from almost 87% earlier. Now, this is also because 
uh, all the themes have been of a rising inflation. If you see German inflation, that has picked up to 3.7% uh, versus 3.2% in November. Uh, so basically, as JK mentioned, inflation in the coming months may be higher uh, as subsidies for energy-related consumption in the Eurozone will be taken off by the government. Uh, so yields were higher across. Uh, Germany yields higher by 11 basis. Uh, UK, uh, UK PMI services was higher, pushing yields higher by 10 basis. US yields were also higher across all tenors. Uh, but for rupee, we, uh, we are seeing some, so, some sort of resilience. Uh, it remains range-bound, but uh, with a, reduce, a reduction in the buying intensity. Uh, that's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Uh, tune in next week on Monday with for the latest round uh, of updates from us. Thanks for listening.